the booking for services in November will be with Pauline Littler, not Jan Chaplin, as it said on the uh, newsletter this week. So if you want to come to church uh, in November, um, please ring Pauline to book your place. And a reminder that on the 25th of November, we've got a church meeting. And if there's any items you want to put on your agenda, please send them to Sonia as soon as possible. And a reminder um, that Linda will be in church on Wednesday between 9.30 and 11. If, re if you require any bags for our Christmas project, um, but I know she has also got some here with her today. So if you want any bags to fill for the Christmas project, uh, see Lynn, Lynn afterwards. And it's my pleasure this morning to welcome Adela to lead our service. Good morning, everybody. I haven't been so high up in this church before. <laughs> it's quite a weird place to be, but also a very good place to be. And I'm really pleased that I'm able to take this service this morning. Our theme is on mission. And we have a photograph here, which I'd just like to say a bit about, a cross by the side of an open doorway. It's actually a photograph from um, a diocese retreat house. Unfortunately, the retreat house is closed now. But to me, it was just something I'd got in my library, if you like, that showed the cross alongside open doorway, i.e. mission is all about going out there. And I hope when by the time we come to the end of the service, we're all sort of on the same page as such about mission. So let us say together our opening words, and if you will join me in the bold print. Praise be to God for the words written in scripture throughout the ages. God is good and we are one. Praise be to God for the good news written to tell us about Jesus. God is good and we are one. Praise be to God for all words written in our hearts to inspire and guide us. God is good and we are one. We are from love, of love, for love. Amen. So we sing our first hymn this morning, Praise with Joy, the World's Creator. And we stay sat down.
We're going to be now having our prayer. A prayers of approach and confession. But the prayer, the prayer of confession is also using words from our gospel reading. And I'll be inviting you to take part with that as well as saying the prayers of approach together. So let us say together. God of love, you call us to become before you with love in our hearts. We all have our own ideas and experiences of what love is, from the human to the divine, from the smallest flicker to the greatest flame. We offer ourselves to you now, seeking to learn more about the depth and breadth of your amazing love. We need to know how to put that love into action, share that great warmth with our neighbour every day of our lives. Still us before you now and enable us to receive. And so we move on to the prayer of confession. And again, if you'll join me in the bold print. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Lord God, we confess that we struggle to love others. Sometimes we don't even recognize who our neighbor is, never mind knowing how to love them. Encourage us in your ways, O oh Lord. The second most important commandment is this, love your neighbor as you love yourself. There is no other commandment more important than these two. We confess that we don't always realize that to show love to others, first we have to learn to love ourselves. Sometimes we haven't a clue how to do that. We may have an idea in our head of what love is, then get cross with ourselves when we fall short. Encourage us in your ways, O oh Lord. We confess that we have the idea that love is this great dramatic gesture or action, when sometimes it can be as small as a touch of a fingertip. Encourage us in your ways, O oh Lord. Amen. So as I say, we're looking at mission this morning very much in the context of the church building, beginning to open up and other groups starting to come in, but also how we reach out to our community in these forever COVID changing times. And if we could have the next screen, please. I just wonder how many of you, and it would be helpful if I could have perhaps a little show of hands, watch the TV programme Richard Osman's House of Games. Oh, good. So you'll know where I'm coming from. Thank you. Well, there is a particular round. I mean, they don't do it every time. I think it's good that there's always never exactly the same rounds of questions in every episode. But they have a round, and the, um, there's a highbrow question for the contestant to guess the answer. And if they don't know the answer from the highbrow question, then there's a lowbrow question. So I'm answering this word question, what is mission? With a highbrow answer and a lowbrow answer. And my first, my highbrow answer is um, a quote by the scholar David Bosch. And he says this about mission. Mission is the good news of God's love incarnated in the witness of a community for the sake of the world. And to me, that doesn't really trip off the tongue. I'll say it again. Mission is the good news of God's love incarnated in the witness of a community for the sake of the world. The lowbrow version which I like the best. Mission is love in action, as simple as that. And so with those words, mission is love in action, 
we're going to sing our next hymn, God's Spirit is Deep in My Heart. trodden free and go tell everyone the news that the kingdom of God has come and go tell everyone the news that God's kingdom has come just as the thought sent me so I'm sending you out to be my witnesses throughout the world the whole of the world he sent me to give the good news to the poor tell prisoners that they are prisoners no more tell blind people that they can see and set the downtrodden free and go tell everyone the news that the kingdom of God has come and go tell everyone the news that God's kingdom has come Don't carry a load in your pack You don't need two shirts on your back God's workers can earn their own keep Can earn their own keep He sent me to give the good news to the poor Tell prisoners that they are prisoners no more tell blind people that they can see and set the downtrodden free and go tell everyone the news that the kingdom of god has come and go tell everyone the news that god's kingdom has come Say, don't worry because on that day God's Spirit will speak in your heart, will speak in your heart. He sent me to give the good news to the poor, tell prisoners that they are prisoners no more. Tell blind people that they can see And set the downtrodden free And go tell everyone The news that the kingdom of God has come And go tell everyone The news that God's kingdom has come He sent me to give the good news to the poor tell prisoners that they are prisoners no more tell blind people that they can see and set the downtrodden free and go tell everyone the news that the kingdom of God 
has come and go tell everyone the news that God's kingdom has I'd like to invite Gaina to come and tell us our Bible readings this morning. The first reading is the Old Testament reading from Deuteronomy, which I looked up and it says it were the addresses given by Moses to the people of Israel. We're reading chapter 6, verses 1 to 9, and I'm reading from the Good News Bible, and it's headed, The Great Commandment. These are all the laws that the Lord your God commanded me to teach you. Obey them in the land that you are about to enter and occupy. As long as you live, you and your descendants are to honour the Lord your God and obey all his laws that I am giving you, so that you may live in that land a long time. Listen to them, people of Israel, and obey them. Then all will go well with you, and you will become a mighty nation and live in that rich and fertile land, just as the Lord, the God of our ancestors, has promised. Israel, remember this. The Lord and the Lord alone is our God. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Never forget these commandments that I'm giving you today. Teach them to your children, repeat them when you're at home, and when you're away, and when you're resting, and when you're working. Tie them on your arms and wear them on your forehead as a reminder. Write them on the doorposts of your houses and on your gates. And the New Testament reading is from the Gospel according to Mark. And I'm reading from chapter 12, beginning at verse 28. And that also is headed the Great Commandment. A teacher of the law was there who heard the discussion. He saw that Jesus had given the Sadducees a good answer. So he came to, them, to him with a question, which commandment is the most important of all? Jesus replied, the most important one is this. Listen Israel, the Lord your God is the only Lord. Love the Lord, your God with all your heart and with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. The second most important commandment is this, love your neighbor as you love yourself. There is no other commandment more important than these two. The teacher of the law said to Jesus, well done teacher, it is true as you say, that only the Lord is God, and that there is no other God but he. And to love the, God, the Lord with all your heart, and with all your mind, and with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself, is more important than to offer animals and other sacrifices to God. Jesus noticed how wise his answer was, and so he told him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. After this, nobody dared to ask Jesus any more questions. Amen. Thank you, Gaina. So, is mission alive in United Church getting? Quick answer, yes. Could we develop what we do? 
Quick answer, yes. I remind you of our two meanings of mission. God is the good news of God's love incarnated in the witness of a community for the sake of the world. Mission is love in action. How are we, as members of Uniting Church Getty, the eyes, ears, hands, and feet of Christ, witnessing our faith to the community of Sketty, sharing our love of Christ within the actions that we employ, both inside and outside the church building, as individual members and as a congregation. At the recent meeting of the Mission Outreach and Events Committee, we reflected on the five marks of mission, which are number one, to proclaim the good news of the kingdom. Number two, to teach, baptize and nurture new believers. Number three, to respond to human need by loving service. Number four, which is a bit of a long one, to seek to transform unjust structures of society, to challenge violence of every kind, and to pursue peace and reconciliation. And the last one, to strive to safeguard the integrity of creation and sustain and renew the life of the earth. Now, I am not in the business of ticking boxes. In other words, to see how well the church is doing in relation to these marks of mission. But it seems to me that it is important that as a committee we think about these marks of mission as we also reflect on what is outreach and what, a, what type of events do we arrange and why. Looking a little closer at the love in action definition of mission and bearing in mind our readings for this morning I feel that this definition helps us to consider how we relate to people engage with people as we do the reaching out either to people outside the church building and community or the in reach as I call it to the people who are members of the community groups or organizations that are now meeting once more in our church building. And I think it's important to consider a few points. Trying to love someone isn't just about smiling and saying hello. I feel it's important to remember you as that one person and the other person standing in front of you. Even if you know them really well, you are different people. You have got different worldviews. They could have a physical disability that you can see. They might have a, a disability you can't see. They've got different life experiences. Now we've all got COVID life experiences, which are all different for every single one of us. And working with others, engaging with others, means possibly listening to something we don't want to hear. And it's how we then work with that. New members joining a group should change that group because that group has now got a new person. And it's about, as that group, how does it now fit with a new person? As a church, are we ready to change as new people start coming into the building, either with the groups or coming to join our church services? In the Mission Outreach and Events Committee, we are considering one way that as a church, we can carry out our love in action, our mission to the groups that use the building. And we're creating what we call a link person role, where somebody from the church congregation, from time to time, will just visit that group, say, hello, how are you? And just possibly find out if there's any prayers that are wanted for that group or members of that group which those prayers can then be part of our prayers on a Sunday, you know, prayers for the world, 
or can be waved into the weekly or the midweek communion service. But just by a person from the church going to the group could open all sorts of doors, we just don't know. But equally, that person can bring back news to us of that group, which we may not have knew about already. And there'll be a little role description, job description appearing in one of the weekly letters in the near future. Recently, I have received my latest copy of the newsletter from an organisation called Together for the Common Good, which is an ecumenical national Christian charity dedicated to the renewal of civic life by bringing new ways of thinking into church and civic life. And I would like to share an extract from the opening article as it speaks so well into our service theme this morning. There is a lot of talk across the churches about mission in a post-COVID society. But our response will only work if we comprehend what has gone wrong. The unravelling we see around us is not primarily caused by the coronavirus. The pandemic is exposing and speeding up forces which have been corroding our civic life for over 40 years. The symptoms we see are the inevitable consequences of a hyper-liberal philosophy of both the left and the right. This individualism has wreaked catastrophic effects on our institutional and social relationships and sense of belonging, resulting in extreme equality, mutual suspicion and loneliness. By contrast, our faith centres around an act of reconciliation between God and humankind. It is fundamentally relational. The vocation of the church at this time, where church is understood as groups of faithful people, is not only to be gathered inside, but also outside, living in loving friendship with others in the neighbourhood. We must keep our eyes on the kingdom and on faithful relationship. Despite their vulnerability, churches are uniquely placed to be carriers as sojourners in a broken world. The newsletter goes on to say, we are at the beginning of a very big change. Despite many failures in our changing politics, there is real hope in the levelling up agenda. But government cannot and should not do it all. The work of the local church as a dynamic Eucharistic community is to keep alive and strengthen the human space where people can encounter God's love, participate and talk freely, free from fear of division, coercion or division. So what happens next? I am rereading Acts at present, and I share these verses with you from Acts 13, verses two to three. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. So after they had fasted and prayed, they placed their hands on them and sent them off. I think there is something here about us giving ourselves dedicated times to pray about our church's mission in Sketi, both as individuals and as a congregation, as we continue to make our plans, our mission plans. As a church, you formed a mission outreach and events committee because you care about this important area of your church life. There is a helpful theological reflection model called See, Judge, Act, which I believe is going to be very helpful for us to use in 2022 
as we continue to serve the community of Skete and consider how we engage in mission, outreach and our planned events. I would like to end with a quote from a female theologian called Monica K. Helwig, which I first came across in 2005, which seems to me to sum up well this image of achieving potential, why it's so important to keep checking out our ways of engaging in mission. This is the paraphrase version. God creates people in the divine image by awakening them into freedom, self-determination and creativity, in which they discover that they essentially need to be in relation with others. People's humanity is realized in the ways they shape the earth, themselves, one another and their communities. In this way, they are all fulfilling and realizing the creativity of God. When people shape communities which offer liberation, happiness and fulfilling relationships for all, they then fulfill the purpose of creation. Then all creation is drawn into a great harmony and returns the creator in peace and God is glorified. Hallelujah. Now I'm probably going to do something <laughs> that doesn't usually happen because I've realised as I've been going through, I've missed a page out. And it's remarkable that it didn't sort of jump up at me, but you may have spotted it. So I apologise because I would like to go back and read the page to you that I've missed. And it's about looking a bit deeper at the marks of mission because it, it's important that we do look about how the Marks of Mission fit with our church. So I am really sorry about this, but I hope you bear with me. So looking briefly at the deeper Marks of Mission, the first one, to proclaim the good news of the kingdom. Jesus announces the presence of God's kingdom in the whole world. As a local church, we are engaging in the world church in differing ways and in places in God's world. Our church newsletter gives us helpful reminders of this. The second one, to teach, baptise and nurture new believers. The actual act of baptising new believers is Leslie's role, but we can all nurture and teach new believers in one way or another. The third one, to respond to human need by loving service. As servants of Christ, we are called to serve our community. And it's my privilege to work with you on this mark of mission. The fourth one, to seek to transform unjust structures of society, to challenge violence of every kind and to pursue peace and reconciliation. I encourage you all, if you don't do already, to seek out the work of the Joint Public Issues Team, which is a joint initiative between the Methodist United Reformed Church and Baptist Church. Again, there is reference to JPIT in the newsletter. And the fifth one, to strive to safeguard the integrity of creation and sustain and renew the life of the earth. We are heavily involved in the Eco Church Programme. As you know, we're now working on the gold standard, which calls on us as a congregation and individuals to be involved as much as we can. And more people joining the Eco Group would be greatly appreciated. I've also recently come across the marks of the church reflected in Acts 2. They are teaching or Christian lifelong learning Fellowship, to help sustain the living faith. Communion, obviously the breaking of bread. And prayer. And it seems to me that these church landmarks are good foundation blocks to the marks of mission. 
So I'll just say again, as a way of bringing this reflection, <laughs> this disjointed reflection to an end, the quote, because I think it does really sum up our ways of engaging in mission. The quote also, as I should say, helps us to see we should engage in mission because we believe in God's plan for everyone to reach the potential God wants for us all. God creates people in the divine image by awakening them into freedom, self-determination and creativity in which they discover that they essentially need to be in relation with others. People's humanity is realised in the ways they shape the earth, themselves, one another and their communities. In this way, they are fulfilling and realising the creativity of God. When people shape communities which offer liberation, happiness and fulfilling relationships for all, they then fulfil the purpose of creation. Then all creation is drawn into a great harmony and returns to the creator in peace. And God is glorified. Amen. And so we turn to our prayers for the world, for others and ourselves. And there's a short response. When I say, God of love, please reply, may we love our world, each other and you. God of love, may we love our world, each other and you. Let us pray. As leaders of nations meet in Glasgow to agree goals to combat change, we pray that there may be commitment by all countries to work together and join forces with civil society, companies and people on the front line of climate change to inspire and lead climate action. We pray that those who meet in Glasgow may have the wisdom and vision to treasure, protect and love the world which you created and which you entrusted to our care. God of love, may we love our world, each other and you. As coronavirus cases continue to increase and as many are concerned about the impact of the virus on their lives and their mental health, we pray that you will inspire the leaders of all nations to take appropriate actions to protect all people. We thank you for the vaccination program and we pray for all who are delivering the boosters, the health professionals and volunteers alike. May research be accurate and helpful. May decisions be carefully thought out and wise. May the response be wholehearted. We pray for those whose mental health has been affected in any way, those suffering now with the virus and those caring for them. God of love, may we love our world, each other and you. We pray for peace throughout the world. We pray for Afghanistan, where more than half the population faces acute food insecurity. We pray for refugees from Afghanistan as they make their new homes in the UK, especially those here in Swansea. Along with the URC Commitment for Life programme, we pray for people living in Bangladesh, Zimbabwe, Israel and the occupied Palestinian territories and Central America. We pray for the work of the Christian Aid and Global Justice Now. God of love, may we love our world, each other, and you. We pray for churches and places of worship in our community of Sketty, and we pray for the community outreach that they are leading. We pray for the Sketty Food Bank, now operating from Holy Trinity, and the new lunch club at Sketty Park Community Centre. 
We pray for our own church and for the groups currently based here and the ones that are slowly returning to use our building, both church groups and community groups. We pray for the outreach of the Sunbeams toddler group and all the work being put into the preparation of the gift, Christmas gifts for the asylum seekers and refugees known to unity in diversity. May we enable people to encounter God, work together to build community, serve those in need and share your love widely. God of love, may we love our world, each other and you. We bring into your love all for whom we are especially concerned today, naming them in our hearts or picturing them in our minds. We pray for the sick and those who are worried, for the lonely and any who feel isolated, for the sorrowful and those who are recently bereaved, for ourselves, our families and friends. God of love, may we love our world, each other and you. Jesus said, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. And you shall love your neighbour as yourself. God of love, may we love our world, each other and you. In Jesus' name, Amen. We bring these prayers to a close by saying together the Lord's Prayer in the modern form. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And so we come to our final hymn, which hopefully will make you feel that, yes, you are ready, as the words say, to make the earth the place in which the kingdom comes. Sent by the Lord am I. So we just come now to our closing words. And if you'll join me with a bold print. 
May the world of God dwell in our hearts, in our minds and in our actions every day of our lives. And let us pray for one another, saying together, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and every day. Amen. Have a blessed week, everybody. It's sunny, still shining, so I think we might get home dry. And I think those on Zoom will be going into their coffee breaks. <laughs>